chart update 31st May. An enemy withdraws. As COVID-19 fades, the enemy is laying mines to keep you distracted until they're safe. This was not a media hoax. It is not a case of mistakes were made. Stay focused. Note to censors we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. Wow, what a week. Norway's PM claims that with what they've now learned, they could have chosen not to lock down. And the Washington Times reveals it's a big hoax hyped by the media. Go figure. Except that article is a month old, it turns out, but it flagged a concern for me. This was not a media hoax. Their article correctly states it as a political hoax, though even that's questionable. The politicians seem very ready to take other people's orders, complying with dodgy science and issuing harmonised messages. No normal until a vaccine. It also made me wonder about the Norway PM's announcement. Charmingly honest mea culpa, or sign that the elite are deciding they've milked it about as much as they can. However, be entirely clear, this was designed by scientists Ferguson et al. and implemented by politicians. The media were merely obedient servants. And now the PM who implemented the strategy of the scientists funded by Gates has met with Gates, the Yalta of COVID-19. Whether they fade the crisis or prolong it, this agenda was designed to exploit the virus, Imperial College report. The damage was intentional. It doesn't matter that it makes no sense to some people for politicians to damage society. It makes no sense for people to throw stones at windows, but some people get a kick out of it. And some people use truncheons on people because they get a kick out of it. Why doesn't change the what? It was done, and it was done intentionally. We'll have a quick run through the UK, where the slides demonstrate the two key memes we've illustrated before. That lockdown had zero effect, and that once the virus hit peak, far from declining, it just kept going. That ain't a virus. Here's the classic UK chart showing cases utterly ignoring the no lockdown projection and rising higher. That it never went below the no lockdown projection shows that lockdown had zero effect. It looks even more absurd and linear naturally. And a straight line climb? Yeah, that's a virus all right. Not. We did our standard chart showing the normal distribution till close to peak. And our cases growth analysis showing that far from declining at peak, it turned and stayed level. But we wanted to look at deaths as well and decided to start with a clean slate. So here's cases, a perfect fit for its associated normal distribution, which isn't just a good convenient fit. It's driven by the core cases data. And here's the accompanying version for deaths. It's not just a good fit. The normal candidate is defined by the death data and turns out to be a perfect fit. So yes, the virus was normal until peak. Because some people might argue that projections aren't proof, here's the growth rate of the virus with the growth rate of its fitted normal curve. Unsurprisingly, a good fit and declining straight to one, peak. At which point the virus miraculously detects that it's at peak and it veers upward relative to its path, so increasing the cases recorded relative to what should have been the case, so to speak. Also, from 23rd March, or 31st March at least, given incubation, that growth rate should have plummeted due to lockdown. But it continues blithely, ignoring lockdown, which has made zero difference. The same for deaths, looking even more artificial as it decides that peak doesn't cut it. Let's have more deaths. And the final matching cumulative charts showing the cases ignoring the natural curl over of any humped or peaked distribu distribution, that's not flattening the curve, just its normal behaviour. But even that hasn't happened. The same for deaths. No pretense at budging for lockdown, and once peak hits, it just keeps going. All six are useful, but I just need these two and a courtroom to show that lockdown had zero effect and that the virus ceased to behave like a virus once it hit peak. One last observation, to match to peak we doubled the cases and deaths to that point, so that we can say that without the government's manipulation we would have expected to experience 154,000 cases and 17,700 17, deaths. 
I see we're at double that in deaths, 38,000 and 272,000 in cases versus 154,000, not quite double. The government games are reaping a rich harvest. A couple of intro slides for anyone not familiar without commentary. Else watch previous updates to get more comfortable with the data available. Then it's on to the standard charts. Okay, onwards. And uh, of course, I hope you were able to pause if you wanted more time. UK we've covered, but here's its chart in depth. Unsurprising, a lot of the indicators look out of whack. Deaths the same day as cases, for example. 100% death rate on lag deaths back to the cases they should have applied to, 14 days, as seems reasonable from Germany and the UK's own statements. Basically, a massive court case waiting to happen, or pitchforks. Either way, the UK is currently fraud central, or one of three key centres. The others are, of course, Belgium and the US, New York, though Canada is also playing the game, as are EU core nations. To see that, check out our other videos for the exponential increase in damage by the virus as you approach the Western power centres. Italy finally looking like it's over, though it's taken its time versus how quickly it escalated. For the rest we now go through by region. Algeria, lingering cases and deaths, but at a low level. South Africa, after looking good with its early contagion, seems embroiled in a steady climbing contagion currently at low levels a rare second wave, or just late with the first. Zambia, not quite what virus, but close, and seven deaths. Yeah, I wish we could wish for that. The Americas and Barbados leads with a reassuring non-event, and another seven deaths as it happens. Look at the standard mortality percent. That's basically zero, not a factor. Brazil has now reached European levels at 1.7 Hubei in cases, 2.3 in deaths. We're talking a grand total of 5 death days, equivalent to 5 days of normal mortality for the entire contagion. Canada taking its time coming down as one of the gaming countries akin to EU core, faithfully following the agenda. Still 8.5% of normal mortality. Yep, big threat to society. And of course, lockdown saving you, unless it didn't. Look at the pale blue lines bottom left, dropping normally, then leveled off to give you more cases, more deaths. Ecuador, from anecdotal reports while researching cities, seems to be having a legitimate issue not related to being a Western power, 3.6 times Hubei in deaths. South America seems to be the final continent to join the experience. Interestingly low cases, 0.5 Hubei, but relatively high in deaths, 1.3 Hubei, by comparison, still climbing. And that's Mexico. USA, and look at those early lagged death rates, 55%, 12.2 death days. New York is a poster child for false figures and other cities and states feature large for extreme hit read candidate fraud. Europe and Austria, two very clean humped and completed curves bottom left, well separated 15 days, 1.6 and 1.4 Hubei. This is what passes for a European real result. Whereas Belgium, home to EUHQ, is the hardest hit nation on the planet. Only exceeded by various states, New York most particularly, one of the three power centres all massively hit by the virus. 33 death days, 15 times Hubeian deaths, implied or lagged death rate of 77%, mortality over 100% of normal mortality on a number of days, 
and 40% of normal mortality. But it's over. And worth noting that the worst hit on the planet managed to only rack up 40% of normal mortality for three months. Want to give up for democracy for that? No, I wouldn't. Croatia, not normally thought of as a European leader, but at 0.5 Hubei in deaths and cases, it's leading Europe and showing you don't have to do a Belgium. Over and out. Denmark, interesting for two, actually several outbreaks. Over, extremely low mortality, bottom black slug and orange line at 5% of normal overall. Finland, two well-formed humps, bottom left, good separation, extremely low mortality, 1.1 times Hubei in cases and deaths, over with 3% of normal mortality during the period. Textbook. France, two well-developed hump, over, but at a price. Eight times Hubei in deaths, 17 death days, high implied lag death rate. I'd say they were part of the agenda and bear investigating. Germany, like Austria, figures, a textbook case by European standards, still 10 times the Far East. Two humps, well separated, 14 days, very low daily and overall mortality, 4.6% overall, and it's over. Greece, poster child for sticking it to the agenda, 0.2 cases, 0.3 deaths, barely three times the Far East. Two humps done, low implied lag death rates, and minuscule daily and overall mortality, 0.8%. What virus? Hungary, good humps, not quite over in deaths, very reasonable for Europe, at one times Hubei in deaths. Good implied lag death rate, extremely low daily and overall mortality, 2.6% of normal. Nice job. Iceland, worrying until we got the death data and found out it was testing, a niggling dilution of useful data. Infected but no or slight symptoms isn't a case. In fact, it's the least worrying down at Far East levels, 0.5 day deaths. Ireland is more worrying, significantly so, at 6.3 Hubei in deaths, 10 day separation and low implied lag death rate, so might actually be real local investigators need to figure out. Malta, minuscule deaths, not an issue for them. Netherlands, an EU core nation, and it shows. You die before you get to hospital. Deaths peak ahead of cases peak. High implied lag death rate, 75%, 6.5 times Hubei, and 13.8 death days. Even so, it's worth noting that even a loyal servant of the agenda has only managed 15% of normal mortality overall. Hardly an existential threat. Norway, home of the PM who said, gosh, our scientists now believe lockdown wasn't necessary. Gee, our back of the envelope showed that on 24th March. Winding down? Bear in mind, with the virus fading, it's time for pitchforks, but they'll say mistakes were made and hey, you're alive. There is that, but so are cattle. That ain't democracy. Still, good humps, very well separated, 27 days, very low implied, lag death rate, hardly surprising with that separation, and 0.8 Hubei deaths, an excellent European result. Poland either has the mother of all testing programs going on, or it's being scammed. Deaths extremely low at 0.5 Hubei, so let's hope it's the former. Portugal, good humps, but a slight resurgent recently. 2.6 times Hubei, so not brilliant. About a loyal European level of deaths, and at only 7% of normal mortality, hardly an existential threat. Russia, still in progress, passing Hubei in cases two times, but still low, 0.6 times in deaths. Slight caveat that Russia, as a widely dispersed nation, could have e.g. a badly hit Moscow, and still look good. Spain, the land of Franco, vying with Brussels for honour of worst hit nation at 25 days. Look at the mortality indicator, Black Peak, one of the worst in the world. However, all is not kosher. 
You die as you enter hospital. No lag cases to deaths. Implied lag cases, um, death rates at 14 days are 322%. So three times as many people died of the disease as caught it. No death stuffing there then. This is a severe case of something, fraud or epidemic, and my bet's on fraud given poor indicators. But it's still only 26% of normal mortality. Another non-existential threat that's over. Sweden, I'm sorry to disagree with the viewer who said Sweden's figure was going down and there was no sign of oscillation, but that looks like two long wavy lines to me. It is, in fact, the most absurd chart of all 214 countries that I've seen, and all because Sweden dared to not lock down. And now it pays the price. It's just not the virus. In fact, on writing that, decided to do the same as the UK and look at its normal comparison. And that turned out to be easy. I literally did not even have to adjust the factors for the theoretical normal. That is a compelling argument, strongly suggesting that the UK and Sweden had a common experience which, dare we say, might be the virus for real, up to peak. Even the timing was identical, and the gradient looks good, and then at peak, the same old, same old. So no, that's not the virus having second thoughts, it's UK-itis, or agenda-itis. This is why I put the growth chart first. A good fit, but shouldn't we be doing that real second peak? Except the growth chart shows it's not the real peak, but the bonus fake deaths. Let me emphasize that. These aren't two charts, though they are obviously. They are the same curve, viewed differently, one for its daily deaths, one for the growth rate of those same deaths. In other words, the growth chart sees real Swedish daily death growth hit unity flat today equals yesterday around the 17th of April and the normal kept going down and the real decided not to. Uh-huh. So yes, that second peak is an artifact, a fake peak generously provided by whoever decided Sweden should be punished because that long horizontal flat death history, that ain't a virus. And here's the third in the triptych for deaths, the totals or cumulative curve, and a familiar tale, tracking well until the normal virus says time to quit, and the recorded virus says no, not going to. Frankly, if I was Swedish, I'd get a lawyer. This is good enough to take to court, especially when you add in the UK and compare with other nations who were allowed to quit. The cases versions, essentially identical, and again, I didn't even have to touch the settings from the UK normal chart. I should clarify, the peak date is identical. Total cases, deaths, area under the curve equals two times the value at the peak date. So setting the peak date also sets the scaling factor. Area under normal curve equals one, multiply by two times peak value to get the total cases or deaths. The only free choice is standard deviation and that has to be chosen so that the height matches the real data height. So we have no choice at that point either. The whole theoretical curve is fully determined by the real data and with mean date, total cases deaths set two times peak and SD set to match height at that peak date, there's still one thing we don't know. How wide will Excel make that normal? That's determined by the definition of a normal distribution. It's fixed, so will it fit? If it does, we know we've got a pretty damn good case for saying virus growth was normal because it not only looks good as a hey it looks normal, but it's chosen by the real data. All of which is interesting because like I say, using the same mean, two times peak, same sign of deviation, we get a good growth chart previous and this, which is okay-ish, sort of, but what? Adding a nominal cube to both bottom left and peak, you can see how the early cases complete the peak, so the sum of the two outbreaks is basically one bigger normal outbreak. Uh, it's actually kind of neat, like Fourier analysis of sound waves, one added to another. And there are many charts with mini outbreak after outbreak, but that's for another time. The point is, although kind of dinky with it slipped off the top early outbreak, after that it's the same old, same old flag waving in the breeze. Is it a virus? Is it the UK? No, it's Swedeman, totally screwed because they dared to not lock down. Mind you, we're getting the same treatment, and we did lock down, so hey-ho. 
Maybe Swedes will be more amenable to the vaccine after this. And the world, of course, is watching. And because normal is symmetrical, we can say that like the UK, had Sweden been allowed normal, it would have been done with two times peak cases and deaths, or 20,078 cases and 1613 deaths. Instead, it's on 3,441 deaths, 27,928 cases, top right, and notice those pale blue lines bottom left. Those are the growth charts you've just been looked at in a larger scale. Nifty, huh? These charts, as they now stand, are a gold mine for the serious analyst, which means, of course, that only an OAP Brit has actually done them. That's shameful. Reveal too much? Maybe. Switzerland humps over quite a bad, aka loyal, European at 3.6 3 times 3 2 bay in deaths and noticeable in standard mortality, but overall still only 8.2% of normal mortality and no lockdown. Yep, that's right. Media kind of missed that one. Swiss opted for control, like South Korea, another no lockdown nation, and were rather scathing about lockdown actually. So Korea, no not Seoul, Korea, so Korea, Switzerland, both no lockdown, Korea insisting it respects its citizens, please note Boris Johnson, and Norway admitting it needn't have locked down, frankly. Gosh, and lockdown not saving a single soul in Sweden or the UK. And what do we just hear? Something about lockdown being a political decision, not a scientific or a medical one. It's so pitchfork time. And what has our beloved BJ done but just gone and met with BG? Is there a BH or BI somewhere? No, we know you're by. That's not what I meant. Oops, my bad. Bottom line, BL, bloody hell. Ah, BH. Ah, excellent. BG, BH and uh, BI, BJ? Well, one couldn't say really. But seriously, Johnson, you had to meet with Gates. Your what? Sponsor? Guide? Mentor? Turkey, matching Hubei, one times deaths, two not quite complete humps, overall minuscule mortality, standard mortality indicator, non-EU aligned. Go figure. The Far East, the region of the same, sorry, that's the Sane, and the Miraculous, Australia, totally over, 0.1 times Hubei, 0.2 death days, 0.2% of overall mortality during the COVID experience. And why didn't we have this? China only included because it's in the World Health Organization group because we already have Hubei which was 84% of China cases, 96% of deaths from memory. Anyone using China, not Hubei, is misleading you or ignorant. And sadly Farage, great on Brexit, is going full trumpet on bashing China, the country that gave us good data when the West has lied and lied and lied. Apparently it's okay to be militarily aggressive, superpower, if you're run by neocons with an agenda in the Middle East, but not if you finance the US and supply it with most of its goods. I'm all for nice, sane, free, fair nations, but we ain't living in one right now, so my tolerance for war drum bashing Westerners is slight to nil right now. Pitchforks for preference. Anyway, China Hubei was done even before we started, Imperial College, 16th March, as was South Korea. It's been a case of mapping the fraud ever since. Sad. Indonesia, 0.1 times Hubei, 0.3% overall mortality, but still climbing from extremely low levels. Japan, over in cases, not quite over in deaths, 0.1 Hubei, 0.2% overall mortality. Starting to sound familiar? And where were our politicians seeking guidance from the Far East? Instead, we get Johnson seeking guidance from the man who lied and funded Ferguson. Yeah, that's going to work out really well. Just not for us. Korea, Republic of, the country that was over barring a lingering tale before we even went into lockdown. And they made a point of saying they respected their citizens. No lockdown. 0.1 times Hubei, 0.2% of overall mortality, and you can't even see anything but some black dots on their standard mortality per day chart. Malaysia, 0.1 times Hubei, 0.2% overall mortality, yawn. 
If this had been about making money, everyone would have been screaming, how did you do that? Instead, not a peep. New Zealand, 0.1 times who paid deaths, 0.3% overall mortality. So it's not an ethnic or DNA thing. It must be something about being, I don't know, a long way from Brussels, London and New York. Philippines, 0.2 times Hubei deaths, gosh, high for the Far East and still rising, but going to have to rise a lot to get close to Hubei, let alone European levels. Singapore, interesting of course for being a city, so comparable to New York, but only to that degree. 0.1 times Hubei, 0.2 death days, whereas New York is more like 100. Gee, bad Cuomo virus attack, huh? Thailand, 0 times Hubei. Wow, which means it's less than 0.049 times. Overall mortality, 0%. So again, less than 0.049%. Yep, big problem there. And no one in the mainstream media noticed. The Guardian did a piece on 50 people dying a day in some city, as I found during my city research, when 400 people died anyway in that city every day. But they missed this? Shocker. Vietnam, the country that had a death but cancelled it. Seriously, they recorded one death one day, it was gone the next, and that was the virus. See ya. You know, the big lesson here is that if people are so insular they won't look beyond their borders, even when it's a keystroke away, then they deserve what they get. Just sad that we get it too. Last region, loosely India, Middle East. So here's India. 0.1 Hubei in cases and deaths, but still climbing very late to the experience. Iran, all the countries the West likes to bash have done quite nicely. Karma, or just that we are trapped in game-playing countries. Iran at 1.7 Hubei is actually almost European. Iraq, 0.1 Hubei, 0.2% overall mortality. Positively Far Eastern, but it ain't over. First ape outbreak was over, but there's more about the only second wave, really more of the first wave, you'll see. Israel, two well-defined humps, 13 day separation, 0.6 times Hubei and deaths, 1.6% overall mortality, textbook for a somewhat better than European, not quite, not quite Far Eastern country. Pakistan, still climbing, like India, late to the experience, but 0.1 Hubei in deaths, 0.3% overall mortality, all at very low levels right now. UAE, 0.5 Hubei in deaths, 1.4% overall mortality, looks like it's past peak, just. Not a material threat, and that should be the epitaph for COVID-19 and democracy, the day it died. It's over. The crisis was over the day it began, March 3rd in the UK, with a first press conference. March 16th for the Imperial College dodgy dossier. March 23rd for lockdown, when already Hubei and South Korea were over, and several European nations, Italy, Norway, two of our first, and others were showing this wasn't exponential, confirming what was obvious from Hubei and South Korea. But the politicians and their sponsors had their agenda, and it seems they have no intention of letting go. Well, the story is much the same now, so we have to move on and learn how to live in a post-democracy world. I'll do occasional updates, perhaps fortnightly, but could be weekly if there's other stuff to share. But the priority has to be recording this for posterity and a court case if we should ever get one, and then getting on with our lives. For those of you who have been here from the beginning, wow, two short months but intense, and the premise of our original presentation remains good, not a material threat to society. Never a material threat. To individuals, sure, but so is cancer. I'm walking in front of a car or a truck. You are going to die. It's just very unlikely to be from COVID-19. I'm Andrew May, there are 60 year old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch, Andrew at peerlessreads.com or Andrew at amather.com. Either should get to me.